What's going on, YouTube? This is Descendant of Light back again with an update here. And uh, in my last video, I was talking about Hillary Clinton and a special meeting that she held. And uh, speaking about, I also told you guys in my last video that I would come back with another um, news report that actually came out before Hillary Clinton held this meeting. And this was about two months and a couple days before that happened. And it says, this is actually posted on July 15th of 2018. And by the administrator, it says, Nabiru in February 2021, says Russian astronomer says Russian astrophysicist at the, can't pronounce the word, astrophysical observatory have recalculated Nabiru's date of arrival and now predict the dark star and its orbiting planets will reach perigee between the 21st and 26th of February in 2021, says Russian astronomer and Nabiru whistleblower. Dr. Diomen Damir. Uh, the refined date range supersedes a 2013 Ministry of Defense report that projected Nabiru would be arriving during the fourth quarter of 2020. Last December, Russian President Vladimir Putin commissioned three veteran astrophysicists none with previous exposure to information on Nabiru to reconcile disrepensies and produce accurate, actionable statistics. Uh, let's see, it says, Dr. Zakirovich himself, a Nabiru scholar, said Vladimir Putin wanted brilliant, unbiased minds to review objectively nearly 30 years of research. Over time, we scientists get old and obstinate, Dr. Zakirovich said. Many on Putin's Nabiru research team are the same people who were looking at the data in the 1980s. Some felt the four-month window was accurate enough and were willing to stake their reputations on a more specific timeline. This did not sit well with President Putin. That's why he brought new blood to the program. To examine variables that others did not see or refused to consider. One such variable, Zakirovich said, is Nabiru's tendency to periodically stall in space. Twice in 2018, in February and June, the planetary system, which is said to be over 140 million miles in diameter, defied the laws of physics and on each occasion sat motionless for exactly 184 hours, a little over a week. The Russian space agency scanned for spatial anomalies, as including black holes, dark matter, and cosmic rifts, but found no aberrations that could anchor an entire solar system. When one astronomer suggested Nabiru might be under intelligent control, Putin fired him on the spot for making reckless assumptions. Now, if you think about this, guys, astronomers said that Nabiru, which is a planet, it's basically a solar system inside of a solar system. And supposedly... Astronomer thinks that this thing is operated by an intelligent species, which could be so. I don't believe it's an empty, I, I do not believe that Nabiru is an empty solar system. I believe there is indeed life within it, but the question is what kind of life are we looking at here? Mysteries are yet to unfold about this mysterious planetary system. 
So it says, while the Nemesis star may be a brown dwarf, it has a density of 155.6. And the, by comparison, Earth's density is only 5.51. It's theoretically possible that over hundreds of millennia, Nabiru's orbit intersected, for lack of a better phrase, weak spot in space. Each time Nabiru hits those locations, they weaken more, creating a cosmic sinkhole or depression and uh, in the space-time continuum. Very strange. So they think this thing is altering. I think this thing has the ability to alter those things that are even above. It's just, it's just, they can't explain it, guys. And uh, this thing is defying the laws of physics. Very, very strange, you know? And um, it says, ultimately... The depression becomes deep enough to temporarily halt Nabiru's progress towards Earth. Imagine if you drop a bowling ball on wet cement. If you try to roll the ball, does it move? No, it does not. Same principle. The counterclockwise rotation of the seven orbiting planets creates enough central centrifugal force to free the system. Seven orbiting planets, guys. A dragon with seven heads <laughs> and ten horns, which are moons. Come on, guys. Very strange. I know we're getting to something here. It says, as to why these anomalies have gone unnoticed, he said contemporary equipment is neither advanced nor sensitive enough to detect obscure astronomical phenomena. The astronomers sifted through three decades of information looking for other instances when Nabiru may have stopped suddenly in its tracks, but Zakharovich said the new crop of astronomers found no additional examples of impediment. After Nabiru freed itself in June, it rapidly accelerated to a mean orbital speed of 12 point, oh, sorry, excuse me, 12,874 kilometers per hour. And according to the Russian Space Agency, the center of the Nabiru system is currently 296 million kilometers from Earth. If all information is accurate, Russian calculations do foretell a February 2021 arrival. Guys, this fits perfectly with the midpoint of the tribulation, the plagues of Moses repeated. Guys, you know, 3,000, almost, almost 3,600 years ago, which is about 70 Jubilees, I believe, about 3,500, 3,600 years ago, supposedly this thing has an orbit of such time period. That's roughly the same time period of the exodus in Egypt. I think we're on to something here. It says, in closing, Dr. Zakharovich and Putin, or in closing, Dr. Zakharovich said Putin has enough confidence in the new findings to share them with President Trump when the two leaders meet in Helensky later this month. See, guys, so... According to this article, our president knows exactly what's going on here. But the question is, do they plan to enforce these new laws and regulations that they have planned before the arrival or at the arrival? I'm going to I'm going to step onto the boat that says 2018 may just be the beginning of a new era. This may be the beginning of something we've never seen before, guys. And I say this, let's prepare mentally and physically, and let's keep our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. 
as we see, there's a sinister plot going on. And um, there's really nothing we ourselves can do about it. But we know our Lord Messiah has power over all things. So, guys, this is the Sin of Light. And I'm going to be back with another news article providing more proof on this incident.